Do you know someone who always has to be the center of attention, even if it means stealing the spotlight from everyone else? Have you ever met somebody with an ego so big it could have its own gravitational pull? Do you know some dude who still hasn't grown out of being the fastest kid in second grade? Well, you, my friend, have probably come across a case of main character syndrome. And you might have it too, buddy boy, but don't worry, it's perfectly fine. Let me explain. First, we need to know how to spot someone with main character syndrome. This is actually really easy because everyone with it is really bad at hiding the symptoms, which include 1. A ridiculous sense of self-righteousness. These troglodytes generally conglomerate in social media platforms and online forums, especially Twitter, where everyone seems to think their opinion is gospel and anyone who disagrees is a heretic and should be burned at the stake. It's like a modern day witch hunt, only with more colored hair and no obesity and less common sense. 2. A fluctuating personality. Their personality is like a chameleon on steroids, constantly changing depending on which show they binge that week. 3. General pick-me behavior. These pick-me type people are like attention-seeking missiles. They need attention like they need oxygen. When they run out of it, that's when they start flinging false accusations like a monkey flinging his own feces. And now that we know how to spot someone with main character syndrome, we need to understand where the bees come from in order to plug the hive if you catch my drift. So there are three culprits that could lead you into thinking that you're balky after you join the gym for two months. Genetics, environment, and psychology. Let's start with genetics. You know, those pesky little things that determine whether you'll have your dad's sniffer or your mom's peepers. Well, it turns out they might also be responsible for your he's literally me DNA. A 2008 study took a sample of twins that lived and grew up together and discovered that 64% of the differences in narcissistic traits between them might be due to their genetic makeup, meaning that 64% of the reasons why one twin might be more narcissistic than the other twin could be solely because of their genes. Thanks mom and dad. Moving on to the environment. This one's about how you were raised as a kid and the experiences you had growing up. According to a 2015 study, if your parents tended to treat you like the second coming of Albert Einstein, even when you were just a couple of IQ points shy from being declared mentally challenged, then you might be more susceptible to main character syndrome. The study found that parental overvaluation, meaning when parents view their child as exceptional, even when they may not be, may contribute to the development of narcissistic traits in children. Last but not least, we have psychology. A 1998 study concluded that low self-esteem, insecurity, and the need for control or validation could all contribute to the development of main character syndrome. It concluded that people with high levels of narcissism may use their grandiose self-image as a way to protect themselves from feelings of inadequacy or vulnerability. So now we know how to spot it and what causes it. All that's left is for me to tell you how to prevent it, right? But no, I'm gonna actually uno reverse card this hoe and play devil's advocate. While it's true that having main character syndrome can sometimes lead to a self-centered attitude. It can also be a powerful driving force for success. When someone believes they are the main character of their story, they are more likely to take risks, pursue their passions, and fight for what they want. This can lead to great achievements and contributions to society. A lot of successful people now wouldn't have got to where they are if they didn't have main character syndrome. Michael Jordan, for example, had an unwavering belief in his own abilities and the fierce competitiveness that drove him to push himself to be the best. This sense of being the main character in his own story helped him overcome setbacks and led him to become the GOAT of basketball. Furthermore, having a strong sense of self-worth and confidence can actually make it easier to connect with others. When you are secure in your own identity, you are more able to appreciate and respect the identities of those around you. It can also make you more attractive to others, as people are drawn to those who exude confidence and positivity. In short, while there may be downsides to having main character syndrome, it can also be a powerful force for good. It all depends on how you use it. Remember, with great power, comes great responsibility. Pizza time.